Hi, in the previous video we looked at the general Leibniz rule and I gave uh, a fairly informal proof of why this formula is what we get for the nth derivative of, of a product and I say an informal proof because I gave an idea and explained how it generalized in a way that was correct but we haven't given any formal proof and so for those of you that are interested in seeing how you would write this down very formally um, I am going to do that in this video. This is well beyond uh, A-level maths by the way, I know a lot of people watching my videos are doing maths at school, very accessible to good further maths students if you're interested, but really um, uh, aimed at a, uh, a different audience here. Now I'm going to prove it by induction and I'm going to assume that you know uh, what that means and uh, the base case here is pretty trivial uh, as they usually are but we do need to check it and you can take either n equals zero if you want to be really uh, cheeky and just say okay actually all this says for n equals zero is that f times g is equal to f times g when I haven't differentiated it and that would be fine uh, or you could take n equals one as your base case if you're uncomfortable with those trivial base cases and just say okay when I differentiate it once I just get one time I just get the ordinary product rule and you could write those two terms out uh, it would be the sum from k equals 0 to 1 of, uh, you know, uh, of this, so I just get an f1 g0 plus f0 g1 in this notation I've been using in the previous video for this being how many times I'm differentiating that part of the product. Okay, so so I'm just going to say the base case is fine, and we'll do the, we'll do the inductive step uh, here, and we'll do this one uh, in full. Okay, so I'm going to assume that... Uh, it's true for n, and I'm going to prove that it's true for n plus 1. So, uh, so what would uh, f g differentiated n plus 1 times be then? Well, assuming the inductive hypothesis that this is the nth derivative, I just need to differentiate this uh, once more. Uh, so, let's say it was a x was the variable here. So, I'm going to differentiate this whole uh, product uh, once more. Okay, So uh, I can apply the product rule on each of the terms inside this sum. So I suppose my first step is saying that actually it's only a finite sum here, there's only n things in it, so we know we can swap the order of summing and derivatives here. Uh, the derivative of the sum of things is the sum of the derivatives for finitely many terms, that's un uncontroversial. So, uh, so what I get is uh, the sum from k equals 0 to n of uh, n choose k, my binomial coefficient, times f n plus 1 minus k, differentiating the f, and then I leave the g alone and I'm going to get another sum for all the terms when I'm doing this the other way around where I leave the uh, f terms alone and I differentiate uh, the g function to get a k plus 1. Sorry, my handwriting is strange here, it's always just n's and k's floating around. Uh, hopefully you can work out which one's which from what I'm saying as well. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of work now to show that uh, I can write this in the form of uh, f g n plus 1 is the sum from k equals 0 to n plus 1 of n plus 1 choose k f n plus 1 minus k g choose k. That would be my aim right for the induction that I want to make. I just want to replace n with n plus 1 in this statement. And you see this first term in the sum already looks a little bit like the sort of thing I want because I've got f n plus 1 minus k g k which is what I'd get by replacing n with n plus 1 here. So I'm going to I'm going to leave this term alone, I'm just going to use these ditto marks to say I'm not doing anything with that sum here, so I can, uh, I'm going to leave that on and I'm going to work on the second sum. Okay, so, oh, and I've missed out on n choose k already here, that's a good start, isn't it? So, uh, so this should also be that constant uh, uh, n choose k in this sum as well, so that's f differentiated n minus k times. Um, and we're going to play one of the usual tricks that we do uh, for sums here and I'm going to change the summation here from rather than 0 to uh, n I'm going to go from k equals 1 
to n plus 1. Uh, so I need to replace k with k minus 1 in my sum. And what that does here is if I do n minus brackets k minus 1, I just get uh, n minus k plus 1, so n plus 1 minus k, and I get gk. And again, that gives me something that looks a bit like this thing that I want. Uh, this thing that I want here. Okay, uh, so that's why I'm doing that. Um, now, uh, next step then, uh, I'm going to uh, try and combine these two sums together. But at the moment, they have they go from different uh, values here, right? So I've got k equals one to n plus one, and k equals zero to n. So I'm going to take the zeroth term uh, out of the, the sum here. So n to zero is just one. If I put k equals zero, I get an f uh, n plus one, and then g zero, which is just g. Uh, and then I'll have the sum from k equals one to n of this thing f n plus one minus k g of k, and then the second one, I'm going to keep k equals 1 to n of all of this stuff, so n k minus 1, uh, f n plus 1 minus k g k, and in this term, this one I need to take out that n plus 1 term, then so uh, k minus, so if I put n plus 1 in here, I get n choose n, which is just 1, and uh, you can see that I, hopefully that I just get a term then f zero g n plus one it's kind of similar to the one I pulled out on the left over here oh and I've missed out my <laughs> binomial coefficient in this first sum again there should still be an n choose k inside that sum so let me uh, write that in so sum n choose k and that's going from k equals one to n and now you see I can combine these two sums and because uh, they've both got fn plus 1 minus k g of k so actually uh, I'm going to get as a single sum just uh, the constant n choose k uh, plus uh, n choose k minus 1 which were the two uh, things there multiplied by this product here I'm going to write that more neatly Okay, so I've just got to add these two binomial coefficients together. So I've got n choose k plus n choose k minus 1. I mean, think about binomial coefficients from Pascal's triangle. That's exactly what we do to we add those two coefficients together to get the one below it. Um, and we get uh, n plus 1 choose k. Um, or you might like to uh, just prove that using the factorial notation. So n choose k plus n choose k minus 1, so that's n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial plus uh, n factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial multiplied by n minus k plus 1 factorial just using the definition of uh, n choose r there and if we put these over a, a common denominator uh, this first one needs an extra factor of n minus k plus 1 uh, we multiply that by n factorial and the second one here needs an extra factor of k so I just get plus k times n factorial uh, and on the bottom here I'll have k factorial times n minus k plus 1 factorial and on the top here look I've got n minus k plus 1 lots of n factorial then plus k lots of it so that's so the k's here just uh, just cancel out. So I'm just left with uh, n plus 1 times n factorial, which is just n plus 1 factorial. So this is all on the top here equal to just n plus 1 factorial. And now I've got exactly the definition of uh, n plus 1 choose k, n plus 1 factorial over k factorial. And this is n plus 1 minus k factorial. So you can check that more neatly if you want to, uh, more slowly if you want to. Uh, but that means I can replace this stuff in here 
right? Just with this thing n plus one choose k, uh, and then we have a look at uh, look at what we've got here. Okay, so uh, now I've got something very close to what what I want here. I want remember I want to get n plus one in place of n in this expression. And the thing in the sum here looks exactly like that, except the sum runs from 1 to n, and I want it to run from 0 to n plus 1. But look, the terms I've got in the left and the right here are exactly what we need. So uh, this one, f n plus 1 g0, uh, would be k equals 0. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, k equals 0 in this sum if it was n plus 1. And this one will be exactly k equals n plus 1. So what I've got here is exactly the sum from k equals 0 to n plus 1 of n plus 1 choose k times uh, f n plus 1 minus k times g of k, which is exactly uh, the thing that I was setting out to prove. And so we're done. Okay, so uh, we've proved by induction that this general Leibniz rule that we as uh, showed in some examples in the previous video, it really does hold for any uh, integer value of n. So I hope that was useful, a bit more advanced than some of the videos uh, that I've put up previously. So if you're watching this as a GCSE student or an A-level student, even when you're finding this tough, then um, be patient, go and do maths at university, and, uh, and you'll be doing this sort of stuff in no time. Okay, uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or anything else you want me to do. And I will see you in the next video.